Hey there, how you doing? It's Zach. Um, was watching Democracy Now! a bunch, uh, catching up while uh, I was not watching YouTube for the last three days. And uh, one of the people on Democracy Now! was this uh, guy, uh, Richard Falk, who was the special reporter on the situation of human rights in Palestine for the United Nations. And recently he tried to get into uh, Gaza, and uh, he was, uh, this was a very interesting story actually, um, because uh, he, tr he uh, had an assistant, he had a bodyguard, and uh, himself, and all three of them obtained visas to enter Gaza, uh, and he sent a formal letter to the Israeli government saying, hey, you know, this is who I am, I'm intending to go in there. So they had all this time, you know, prior to him actually arriving, where they could have told him, hey, you know, we're not going to let you do this. But no, instead, they let him, his assistant, his bodyguard, all show up, and then they stopped him right at the border and asked him a few, you know, like perfunctory questions. He didn't seem like they, he said they didn't seem like they were trying to get any kind of information out of him or really challenge his beliefs at all. But then, uh, you know, after questioning him for uh, a little while, they put him in this room with, uh, I think it was four or five other people, he said, where there was barely enough room to stand, and they kept him there for 20 hours, and then they deported him, uh, expelled him, and did not allow him to go into Gaza, even though he's a famous professor emeritus and a, was acting as a representative of the United Nations. So clearly, as he pointed out, the Israelis wanted to have this incident, and uh, it was important to them. And I think it's just another case of them basically, you know, thumbing their nose at the world. And uh, he issued a statement afterwards, and I think his statement is actually really, really compelling. So I'm just going to read the whole thing to you. Um, <coughs> In recent days, the desperate plight of the civilian population of Gaza has been acknowledged by such respected international figures as the Secretary General of the United Nations, the President of the General Assembly, and the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Last week, Karen Abizayed, who heads the UN relief effort in Gaza, offered first-hand confirmation of the desperate urgency and unacceptable conditions facing the civilian population of Gaza. Although many leaders have commented on the cruelty and unlawfulness of the Gaza blockade imposed by Israel, such a flurry of denunciations by normally cautious UN officials has not occurred on a global level since the heyday of South African apartheid. And still, Israel maintains its Gaza siege in its full fury, allowing only barely enough food and fuel to enter to stave off mass famine and disease. Such a policy of collective punishment initiated by Israel to punish Gazans for political developments within the Gaza Strip constitutes a continuing flagrant and massive violation of international human humanitarian law as laid down in Article 33 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. It is long past the time when talk suffices. As Abu Zayed has written, the chasm between word and deed with respect to upholding human rights in occupied Palestine creates a situation where radicalism and extremism easily take root. The UN obligated, is obligated to respond under these conditions. Some governments of the world are complicit by continuing their support politically and economically for Israel's punitive approach. Hmm, I wonder who he's talking about. Protective action must be taken immediately to offset the persisting and wide-ranging violations of the fundamental human right to life. And in view of the emergency situation that is producing a human humanitarian catastrophe that is unfolding day by day, however, d however difficult politically, it is time to act. At the very least, an urgent effort should be made at the United Nations to implement the agreed norm of a responsibility to protect a civilian population being collectively punished by policies that amount to a crime against humanity. In a similar vein, it would seem mandatory for the International Criminal Court to investigate the situation and determine whether the Israeli civilian leaders and military commanders responsible for the Gaza siege should be indicted and prosecuted for violations of international criminal law. As Abu Zayed has declared, this is a humanitarian crisis deliberately imposed by political actors. 
It should be noted that the situation worsened in recent days due to the breakdown of a truce between Hamas and Israel and that has been observed for several months by both sides. The truce was maintained by Hamas despite the failure of Israel to fulfill its obligation under the agreement to improve the living conditions of the people in Gaza. The recent upsurge of violence occurred after an Israeli incursion that killed several alleged Palestinian militants within Gaza. It is a criminal violation of international law for elements of Hamas or anyone else to fire rockets at Israeli towns regardless of provocation. But such Palestinian behavior does not legalize Israel's imposition of a collective punishment of a life and health threatening character on the people of Gaza and should not distract the UN or international society from discharging their fundamental moral and legal duty to render protection to the Palestinian people. Well, that's what he has to say on it. I think that's fairly clear. And uh, as a country, we just seriously have to rethink uh, our support of Israel. I mean, as he said, I mean, Israel is getting the kind of condemnation now that hasn't existed since, like, uh, the heyday of South African apartheid. So, you know, this is, uh, these are our friends in the world. So we sh if these are our friends, you know, we really need to be thinking about our policies. But Zach Elliott, you can feel free to argue.